Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And in this video, like as always, I've got a lot of gaming related news for you guys. But before we start, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, do hit the subscribe button and let's get started. The first news is coming from Valve. Steam is one of the most popular online video game stores and one of the big reasons for that is Valve continuously updates its store and attempts tons of experiment with it. The studio also makes its experiments transparent with Steam Lab where they create dozens of experiments around discoverability, video, machine learning and more. One of the recent experiments Valve added to the store is a DLC for you page. The page provides you with information about all the DLC available for you to download for the games that you already own. They have also dropped a statement where they talked about all the stuff we can expect from this new page. The main section of this page will highlight the DLC for games we have already played that are currently the most popular and it will highlight it regardless if it's a new title or an older title. We can also change the view of the page to show us DLCs for the most recent games we have played or the game that we played the most. The most amazing feature of this page is that now it will show the total number of games we have in our library and the total number of DLCs we have in our library. This page will also show us how many DLCs currently available for us to purchase. Well only time will tell us if this experiment will be fully integrated into the store or if it will join the rejected ideas list. Moving to the next news and it's related to a new Tomb Raider TV series from Amazon. According to The Hollywood Reporter, Phoebe Waller-Bridge is reportedly attached to write the scripts for Tomb Raider project. She'd also be on as an executive producer alongside Ryan Andolina and Amanda Greenblatt. According to the report, as of now, she hasn't signed any contract to star in the adaptation. Waller-Bridge recently renewed her deal with Amazon, which will see her adapt the novel's sign here by Claudia Lux. She previously worked on the TV series Fleabag and is set to star in the upcoming Indiana Jones film. Waller-Bridge also co-wrote the James Bond movie No Time to Die. We have already got tons of Lara Croft adaptations and there are two different movies as well. One is started by Angelina Julie and other is by Alicia Vikander. There is also an animated Tomb Raider project on the way which will feature the voice of Hayley Atwell as a Tomb Raider. While we are talking about adaptations, let's talk about HBO's Last of Us, which is one of the biggest hits from the platform in about a decade, as the adaptation generated around 10 million viewers in two days of its premiere alone. The Last of Us adaptation also gained most viewers from the first to the second episode of any show ever on HBO. With all the success, it was just a matter of time before the show got renewed for another season and it is now officially confirmed that HBO renewed the show for another season. As per the show's creator, season 2 of the adaptation will cover the events of Last of Us Part 2 while they will end season 1 with the first game story. One thing to know that part 2 of the game is bigger and longer than part 1 so there is a chance that HBO will need more episodes or even a third season to cover the part 2 story. In an interview with The Hollywood Reporter, Neil Druckmann reveals that they don't have any plans for the show's story to go beyond the games. There is also sad news related to the Last of Us series, as Annie Werching, who played Tess's character in part 1 of the game, sadly passed away at the age of 45 after being diagnosed with cancer in 2020. On to the next news and it's related to Forza Motorsport and allegedly the game has been delayed until the end of 2023. Just a few days ago, developers Turn 10 Studios unveiled Forza Motorsport as a part of Xbox Developer Direct. While doing that, we didn't get any proper release date for the game, but many fans hope that they will give us a proper release time frame for the game than the original Spring 2023 window. Instead, we got a very less specific 2023 release window for the game, which sparked a conversation and speculation if the game has been delayed to the end of this year instead of the second quarter of 2023. Jeff Grubb from Giants Bomb talked about in on Game Mass Decides podcast where he said that there is a chance that Forza is going to slip later into the year and there is a possibility that it won't come out in the first half of 2023. According to him, the time frame for Forza could be the third quarter of 2023 or even later than that. 
Developer Trunten Studios said that Forza Motorsport is most technically advanced racing game ever made and the physics simulation is greater than Forza Motorsport 5, 6 and 7 combined. The advancements in our physics model are greater than Forza Motorsport 5, 6 and 7 combined. The game is set to release for PC and Xbox Series XS. The next news is coming from Xbox Boss as he admits that 2022 was too light on games from their side. In an interview with IGN, the head of Xbox, Phil Spencer, talked about their light slate of games in 2022 and said that 2023 will be exciting. He said that their commitment to their fans is that they need to have a steady release of great games that people can play on their platform and they didn't do enough of that in 2022. And fundamentally, that's on him as he's the head of the business. 2022 was light on game, so they are excited about getting to roll into 2023. Although he didn't reveal anything off schedule, but he did suggest that 2023 will be a busier year for Xbox for a number of reasons, and one of which that is employees will return to the office following the COVID-imposed work-from-home protocols. He said that when he thinks about the rest of the work they are doing this year, it's going to be an exciting year. And from the production stand of view, they're coming out of work from home protocol and according to him, they've got a better working rhythm as an industry. If you look at 2023, Xbox already dropped, Hi-Fi Rush, Arkane's Zombie Shooter Ratfall is set to launch in May, Minecraft Legends is scheduled for April, and Bethesda Starfield is also slated for 2023. While we are talking about Xbox, during the same interview, Phil Spencer talked about Halo Infinite and 343 Industries and he said that despite the recent wave of job cuts, 343 will remain critically important to the success of Halo. Last week, Microsoft confirmed their plans to lay off around 10,000 employees which is around 220,000 person workforce. After that, Bloomberg reported that alongside many other studios, 343 Industries suffered a significant number of layoffs especially those working on the single-player elements. The speculation related to the studio's future grew so much that Hello went on to Twitter and wrote, 343 Industry will continue to develop Hello now and in the future, including epic stories, multiplayer and more of what makes Hello great. Spencer said right now they are trying to make sure that the leadership team is set up with the flexibility to build the plan they need to go build. He didn't talk about much related to what we could expect from Halo Infinite in the future and said, I'm going to let 343 talk about that. They know what they have for next seasons and they are excited about it. He went in depth on that and said, they've got many things, some are rumored and some already announced. They'll be working on, they are excited about the plan forward. Halo Infinite launched in 2021 after a year long delay. Although at launch the game had enough content, but since then lack of updates and cancellation of promised modes left the community frustrated. Spencer acknowledged and said, when we launched the game, we knew we needed to make some commitments to people about the content updates and our timing on those and the quality, and we didn't hit our own bar for doing that. But he did say that the current team has a very good plan to address that. EA officially confirmed that Star Wars Jedi Survivor is now officially delayed by just over a month. The game was originally scheduled for March 17, but now it will launch on April 28. In their official statement, they stated that the reason behind this delay is to achieve the level of polish their fans deserve. They also said that for the last three years, they were working hard on the game and now in the final stage of its development, they're focusing on bug fixes to enhance performance stability, polish, and most importantly, the player experience. They also said that in order to hit response quality bar and provide the team the time they need and polish the game properly, they are adding 6 crucial weeks to their release schedule. The Jedi Survivor story will pick up 5 years after the events of the Fallen Order and Fallen Order game director Dick Asmussen, who was God of War 3 creative director before he joined Respawn is again leading the game development. The next news is coming from lifeisstrangedevelopers.not. Over on Twitter, they have shared a still image and teased fans regarding their next project. The image has some strong 90s vibe and features cartridge-based gaming consoles and VHS tapes and stuff like that. 
they use that image to advertise that they are currently hiring developers for their Montreal studio for many different roles. Judging by the image, it gives vibes of Life is Strange and Tell Me Why, so the game could be a storytelling title. Dotnot recently announced their new project, Banisher's Ghost of a New Eden, which is an action RPG set to release on PS5, Xbox Series XS and PC sometime later this year. Obviously, this teaser shows a very early look at whatever they are planning, so there is no word on which platform the game will roll out on, or even when we could expect it. Back in 2020, Dotnot Montreal split off from their Paris-based studio, and it's led by Life is Strange executive producer and co-creators Luke Backhodadust and Michael Koch. So don't be surprised if the game turns out to be a story-based game. The final news is coming from Ubisoft, as it looks like Ubisoft got hefty amounts of plans for Far Cry. According to the reports of Insider Gaming, Ubisoft is currently working on a new Far Cry game, alongside a standalone multiplayer spin-off. Details on the games are slim, but according to the report, the titles were intended to be one game at one point, but they become two separate projects early on in their development. At first, the title was believed to be known as Project Taliskar under the helm of Dehe before both games became their own separate projects. According to them, currently, single-player Far Cry 7 is referred to as Project Blackbird, while multiplayer title is known as Project Maverick. It is to be believed that Ubisoft Montreal has heavy involvement in both titles. Kotaku also reported related to that, and according to their sources, Ubisoft is trying to move next Far Cry entry from the Dunia engine to Snowdrop, the engine powering the Division 2. Before publishing the reports, when they tried to reach out to Ubisoft, a Ubisoft spokesperson said that, we don't comment on rumors or speculation. So this is all the stuff I've got for today's video. Thanks for watching it. If you haven't liked it, do hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, do hit the subscribe button for more gaming related content. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Till then, goodbye.